Look around. What do you see? Shell there, this auditorium, these quail. What did you see on your way here this morning? Cars, roads, streets, traffic, lots of concrete and buildings. Bet you didn't see this. You are sitting in one of those critically endangered ecosystems in North America. And it's right here in our own backyard in Dallas, Texas. That's right, I said one of the most endangered ecosystems. It's called the Blackland Prairie. And less than one tenth of one percent remains in the entire world. So what is the Blackland Prairie? The Blackland Prairie is named for its rich black soil and tall grasses. Grasses so tall, you can get lost in them. It serves as a habitat for over 500 plant species and 327 different types of birds. It was rich, expansive, and vibrant. That was then. In the past 150 years, we humans have had a devastating effect on the Blackland Prairie, from rapid population growth, crops growing in the prairie fields, and excessive bison and cattle grazing. This is now. Check out this map of Texas. That small sliver is where the Blackland Prairie is. Of the original 20 million acres, only 5,000 remains today. Plus, it's shrinking each year. So unless we take steps now to preserve and protect it, it will soon be gone forever. These Blackland Prairie plants and animals are critically endangered. If we lose these grasses, we lose a habitat for over 500 plants and 327 birds and other pollinators and wildlife. The Henslow Sparrow has already become extinct. Poof! Gone forever. Five years ago, in the seventh grade, I learned about the Blackland Prairie. I learned it's a terrible loss, and I felt moved to do something to help preserve and protect it. So I began consulting Texas master naturalists and leading experts in their field regarding prairie restoration. I visited existing Blackland Prairies. After gathering all these facts and data, I had to act. And so I developed a three-pronged approach to save the Blackland Prairie. One, remove the invasive grasses. Two, replant native grasses in their place. And three, reintroduce Texas endangered animals. And so uh, I began doing that. Johnson grass and Bermuda grass are invasive grasses that have overwhelmed the Blackland Prairie. What makes them so invasive? Well, they repopulate quickly, which allows them to crowd out native plants. And their seeds survive. Their seeds can travel vast distances by wind, water, air, and can even survive ingestion by most animals. And most importantly, their seeds don't decompose in the soil for many years. I initially tried several removal methods, physically digging and pulling, chemical removal applications, and suffocation with a plastic black tarp. None of these methods proved to be truly effective because the grass, the prairie gra these invasive grasses, are so, roots are so deep. The roots are over three feet deep, and the chemicals also harm the native plants as well. So I decided to implement interseeding, which is an innovative planting technique which mimics how seeds grow and germinate in nature. The sheer number of seeds in these high-density patches encourages growth and spread through ultimately throughout the whole meadow. To implement this interseeding method, I needed seeds, so I went to an existing blackland prairie. To gather the seeds, you grab at the base of the plant, form your, cup into, your hands into a cup, and lift up from the stem. The seeds will stay in the palm of your hand. You have to gather many different types of seeds to maintain plant diversity such as big blue stem, little blue stem, Indian grass, switchgrass, and a whole host of wildflowers. Now it's time to sow the seeds in the Blackland Prairie using the interseeding method. Dig a small plot, put the seeds in the spot, then stomp, stomp, stomp. To break it down more slowly, you dig a small plot where you remove the invasive grasses from a small little patch, put the seeds in the spot, 
where you plant these high density patches of variety of seeds. Then stomp, stomp, stomp. This mimics how seeds germinate in nature. We applied this dance and sing method throughout the whole prairie. And despite our off key singing, it works, but it takes a long time. I began implementing this method five years ago, and I'm just now seeing the great results from my hard efforts. After we removed the invasive grasses, replanted native grasses, it was time to reintroduce Texas endangered animals back into the Blackland Prairie. I chose to save the northern bobwhite quail. The northern bobwhite quail's population has declined by 82% in the past 50 years. They can live in the prairie because they can nest and protect themselves from predators in the tall prairie grasses. And they get their name from their mating call, which resembles Bob, Bob White. And believe me, it's loud. You heard this call when you was being introduced. Uh, and so I began raising quail. And yes, my mom deserves a big thank you for allowing me to do this. Imagine our first conversation. Hey, mom. What do you think of me raising over 300 quail in our living room? Least to say, it didn't go over well at first. Since 2013, I've consulted quail experts and wildlife biologists to learn the secrets behind incubating, raising, hatching, and rearing quail. And I obtained my Texas Game Bird Breeder license, which gives me the authority to raise over 1,000 quail in a year. So I began raising quail. There's actually a lot of science behind incubating and raising eggs. For three weeks, the eggs are kept at a constant temperature of 99.5 degrees, with a humidity of 55%. When they were born, we named a lot of them Bob. Bob White, that is. Even when they're born, they're a very fragile bird with a high mortality rate. So we keep them in a small box for two weeks. After they grow stronger, we move them to a brooder in our backyard. There they learn to walk, grow bigger, learn to poop, and chirp constantly. You would think they'd be quiet sometime, but nope. Finally, they get moved to the backyard in a flight pen where they can learn to fly. And they grow up until they're mature enough to be released back into the Blackland Prairie. When they reach of age, they start laying these clutches of eggs. I gather their eggs, and I start, begin incubating them, starting the process all over again. Now, after I was successfully raised in rear quail, it was time to reintroduce these quail back into the Blackland Prairie. To date, there is no successful scientific documentation of successful reintroductions of northern bobwhite quail back into the Blackland Prairie. Working with wildlife biologists at Louisville Lake Environmental Learning Area, known as LELA, I have been banding and releasing quail for three years. Basically, we take 30 quail, 20 females, 10 males, and in this group called a covey. We band them with a single color, like red, green, blue, and then we put them in the flight pen. This is a video of the birds in the flight pen after we just banded them. If you look closely, you might be able to see a little red band on their feet. After they're in the flight pen for a couple days and they get acclimated to the tall prairie grasses and everything else, we take them to a different part of the park. Then we lease them and they're free. Since then, we have spotted some of these quail. These right here are some images of the quail we have released back into the Blackland Prairie. As you can see, they're potentially health, they appear to be healthy and potentially breeding all on their own. These quail have been successively reintroduced back into the Blackland Prairie. From what started as an Eagle Scout project many years ago, it has blossomed into a whole community effort with over 100 volunteers with 3,000 volunteer hours. My passion to save the Blackland Prairie has blossomed into this wonderful thing. It's become something bigger than myself. How can you help? Well, you can remove invasive grasses at your own house and plant native grasses in your neighborhood. Volunteer at a local nature center 
like the 12 Hills Nature Center or Con American Conservancy. And most importantly, think globally and act locally to make an impact in our world. The average human lifespan is about 75 years, which calculates out to about 2.3 billion seconds. That's a lot of seconds. Somewhere along all of those seconds, each of us has the capability, power, passion, and responsibility to preserve and protect our world, not only for our generation, but for generations to come. How are you going to spend those seconds